Alrighty, everybody. Happy Monday. All right, we got a couple things today. Not too much here. Uh, we're going to talk about exceptions. Uh, again, it's a topic we'll cover more in depth uh, if you do continue on into 2151. But I want to show you how we can use them when we write our classes so that our class can communicate to whoever called our code, whoever called the code that we wrote. Uh, so let me fire up. Net, uh, I should have loaded NetBeans first. Um, I, did get, I did get the midterms in. in. I'm sorry, I'm behind on that um, project three. I think it needs to be scored. Uh, and then it will be all up to date. Yep. Yeah, just project three. Um, I guess one of project two. That's weird. So we're going to talk about exceptions. And then we'll have more time to work on project four. I don't think it'll take the whole two hours today. Um, and we're looking at the topic um, just so we can see a good way for us to use it. It's it's good object-oriented programming practice. Um, so I don't want to skip it. And next week then, nope, not, not even next week, no, um, Wednesday, we're going to get started with JavaFX and we'll talk about our final project before Thanksgiving break. So we'll have some of the tools. Um, we're going to talk about more stuff the week after um, to give you more additional fun things. Um, JavaFX is a big topic and we do get deeper into it again next semester if you continue on. Um, but I want to give you more than just what's in chapter 17 so you can make your final project a little bit more interesting. Um, use some of those tools. And then the 15th week here, um, not actually sure we're going to need all of this time to talk more about JavaFX, so we'll have more time to work on the final project. Um, this week here, the 13th and 15th, already thinking about December, holy cow. Did I lose, lose the projector a second? Maybe it's back. Um, it's set aside just for you to work on the final project. I don't have any plans to lecture on any topics, um, so if you want to show up, I can help you work on anything. Ideally, you're done this week, right? Done and out of the way. I know you have finals and other classes. Um, so ours is the last one because we're on Monday, so you probably have other finals going on this week. Um, maybe Actually, if you can get done this week, then you're in better shape, but um, if you need to focus on the other finals, you've got a little bit of time. We've got the work time set aside here, whatever you need to do, and we're not going to present until the 20th. Uh, should be a lot of fun, though, so if you've been attending remote, we'll hop on a Zoom session so you can present your games that way. Um, you can see everyone was going to design it a little bit differently, which is part of the fun, th fun of that. Um, everyone will play their game. We'll go through the checklist. Okay, it does this, 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 and we'll get our scores. Um, should go pretty well. Uh, so the, we're not going to do a quiz on exceptions because we're just hitting a couple highlights here, uh, but we will do a quiz from Chapter 17, and that'll be the last quiz. Um, and then I do need to... I'll update D2L. I'm going to set it up so it'll drop your lowest quiz score so everyone gets a freebie there on the quizzes. Uh, we'll, we'll just uh, ignore the lowest one when everything gets said and done in the scores. Awesome. So let me open up our project here. Yeah, close those ones and open ours. I'm not even touching the cord. I'm losing my projector. There we go. Come on, close the projects. Okay, and then, so we did our vehicle, right? When we did our class project. Oh, I don't even have one in here. And one of the things Vehicle did, right, when we had tried to put too much, um, when we tried to drive too far, right, we were going to give back a true or false as to let them know, hey, what happened here? But there's no guarantee that whoever was calling our code said, hey, I'm going to drive 10,000 kilometers, actually cared if we gave them back a true or false, right? No, no one is forcing them to do anything with it. Um Oh, that was the chapter seven. Let's go back to our we want our project solution. Project three. Four. That's the one. Not this one. And so all we did was tell them true or false when they added gas, if it was successful or not. 
time when they were driving, true or false, whether or not it worked or not. But there was no like forcing action that made them do anything. So what we can do is we can use exceptions. So we've seen exceptions before where we try and convert something and it fails and it, our program either crashes or we have to put it into one of those try catch blocks. Does that ring a bell? Right, to make sure it doesn't crash. So we can do that exact same thing in our code. We can throw an exception or this, this idea of catching an exception. So on the other side of that, when we write class code and we want to communicate, you did a really bad thing and it's gonna violate the integrity of my class, we can throw an exception, right? That's how our class can communicate with, with something that has to be handled or they crash rather than just returning a true or false Boolean here. So we're gonna check and see about the gas in the tank. We're still gonna fix it here. And you know, we're not actually gonna end up returning a false result here because what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the throw keyword. So the throw keyword says, throw an exception. Now these are should be for exceptional circumstances, something that's really bad that would put our class, violate the integrity of our class, right? Hey, you, you did something that I can't do. I need to tell you it was bad. Uh, you know, we kind of worked around it and handled it here, but if you spilled a bunch of gasoline all over the gas station, someone needs to know about it and clean that up, right? We don't just, oh, it failed, and walk away. That'd be real bad, right? So we can throw an exception. Uh, there's tons of exceptions. If you just start typing like exception, tons and tons and tons of them. My favorite one is illegal argument exception. Like the argument you gave me was invalid, essentially, illegal. You, you gave me too much gas. So we, I'm sorry, we throw a new legal argument exception. And then because this is a constructor, right, we're a new instance of this exception, in the parentheses, we can give it a message. You added too much gas and spilled it. Oh, goodness. Where is that? Then? There it is. Okay. So we'll throw that exception. Unreachable statement. Oh, that's the return false is unreachable. Sorry. Yeah, so if you throw an exception, it immediately stops the code. Right? Your code stops right where it is, kind of like a return statement. It just ends it. So the method ends, so it's telling me you'll never return a false value here because you threw an exception. This line is unreachable, so we can just take it out. So if we were to actually try and make one of these vehicles, Right, a vehicle, vehicle equals a new vehicle, vehicle, and what do we need? A make, a model, a color, I don't think any of these actually mattered for what we're doing here. Make, model, color, gas tank capacity, it doesn't matter, kilometers per liter, doesn't matter, because we're just going to try and drive it. I don't know, that was add gas, right? So if we go to add gas, so we add 10 and our capacity is 0, our program's going to crash. Right, if we just give this a run. Thinking hard about it. Uh, luck chan, no, this is this is not pre-recorded. So we get, hey, an exception, a illegal argument exception. You added too much gas and spilled it. Right? That message comes through here. And we'll see, hey, add vehicle, add gas, line 26. From project morning three, project three morning main line eight. So it crashes real hard. So it forces whoever's using your vehicle code to do something about it. So we could put it in a try block, right? We could try to add gas, and then we could catch an illegal argument, legal argument exception. Call it like ex. And on this side, we could just print out the exception here. Right? Especially if we're getting some user input, like, hey, how much gas do you want to add? And the user types something in, we could catch that exception and deal with it. And now when we run, it's not going to crash, but we should still get our message back out. Right? This is the message here. Illegal argument exception, you added too much gas and spilled it. When we print it out. Not the most helpful error in the world, but it's a decent error and the program didn't crash at least. Right? Now, it's interesting, if you remember, when we work with files, it wouldn't let us even compile without try-catch blocks. 
right? But with this, it was perfectly fine. So what you'll learn a little bit more next semester, there's two types of exceptions, like in this, this family of exceptions. Um, there's checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions. Checked exceptions get checked, and you have to deal with them. Unchecked exceptions don't get checked, and you're allowed to crash. Right, so just keep that in your back pocket um, when you're dealing with exceptions. Um, so other things we can do, right, same with like drive, we want to do that same idea here. So we'll throw a new illegal argument exception. Too much gas and spilled it. This is you ran out of gas and didn't make it to your destination. Destination. Right, and then, great. So if we try and drive, we don't have enough gas. We'll get an exception here. Again, it forces whoever calls the code to do something about it. So it, that's this is our way of communicating, rather than just giving them a true or false result that they could ignore, that, hey, you have to go do it now. You have to deal with it now. Um, you know, with that, when we looked at the classes examples in bank account, that's probably also a good one, right? If you try and overdraft your account, you probably need to deal with that right away, rather than, oh, just you just get a false back. Right, um, so we use this throw keyword, and we can deal with it the same way in the rest of our code with try catch blocks. And so you can try the thing that's going to cause an exception, and you can catch that exception and avoid crashing. Does that part make sense? Cool. Um, you can do other fun things with exceptions. Uh, again, most of that you'll tackle next semester. Um, there's a lot of pre-built ones, but you can also make your own types of exceptions if you want to have custom ones. I've never been a big fan of that, just because, I mean, there's so many pre-built ones, but not everything necessarily fits quite right. Um, so it doesn't have to just be an illegal argument exception. But most of the time, like for our methods, if you give me a bad argument, this is a pretty good one. Um, other things we can do here, uh, this is getting to be a little bit more defensive in our coding here. Remember, if you give me a string for make, because string is a reference type, I'm just going to accept that make, whatever you gave me here. But because it's a reference type, what you can technically do, instead of giving me a real string, you can give me null and say, oh, it's not a thing. Remember, anytime we have reference types, their value can be null. So if you give me a null, but I'm expecting it to have a value, bad stuff is going to happen if I try and go use this string for make elsewhere in my code. Now, with our vehicle, we're not. I mean, we're not really doing anything interesting with that. But sure. Um, if we were, we'd be in big trouble here. So a good habit to get into then is to check the values we're given. So we can look for, hey, if make equals null, right, if throw an illegal argument exception. Argument, or there might even be a null of Hang on, null. Ah, we didn't use it, so prob probably a legal argument. It's probably still best here. Throw a new legal argument exception. Make can not be null. Now this is going to get real tedious, but if it's important for these values to have actual values, we want to check every single one of them in our constructor before you make my object. Make sure I actually get a real value, real value for make, a real value for model, for color, on and on and on. We can just rinse and repeat these. Make model color, right? Model color, maybe a lowercase, I don't know. Sure. Um, those sorts of things. Gas tank capacity, we could check to make sure it's not zero, maybe, or not negative. Right? This, this sort of defensive coding is making sure that if people try to do bad things or dumb things with the class that I wrote, it's not going to work. And, and that's sort of the goal, right? With object-oriented programming, we're going to write these classes that are wonderful and reusable and other people are going to use them. And honestly, the stuff we do and like most of what you do in your college career is not. You're going to use it for that project and be done. But that's the goal in industry, right? You're not going to spend a bunch of time on something you're going to use once and throw away. Right? You're, that code's going to stay around and other people are going to use it. So if it's going to stay around and last, we want to make sure that it can't get put into a bad state. Because people will do the weirdest things. And it's not just us writing code. Right? As you get into real projects in the enterprise world, 
it's hopefully going to be more than just you on the team writing code. Because it's actually really boring to just sit all by yourself and write code all day and not like work with anybody and collaborate with anybody or be on a team of other developers and, and learn from other people. Um, you'll do much better like if you're working with other people, uh, especially as new developers, because you can learn from them too. And you learn the way you can see the things that they do, the, the ways, their, their techniques, their tips, their tools. You learn from them. So it uh, generally always pays to not be the smartest one in the room because right? you can learn from other people. Not, not that you can't learn from people if you're smarter than them, but uh, if, if you're like the top developer and everyone else is brand new, you're probably not learning a whole lot, right? Um, so this defensive coding idea, it's a little tedious, but our class, right, needs to make sure that we've got integrity. And if you give me a null value for this, it's no good. Think for like gas tank capacity. We can check if our gas tank capacity in liters is less than or equal to zero. We'll throw in a legal argument exception. And gas tank capacity must be greater than zero. Sure. And probably same with kilometers per liter average. Right? You've got to at least get an actual distance. Kilometers per liter average. There's per your average must be greater than zero. All right, so we've checked all of them here. Right? This is defensive, so to make sure the class doesn't get bad values. Now, these ones are actually really important because all the math gets screwed up if these are negative or zero, right? If you, if you can't put gas in the tank, you can't use my class, right? And if you can't go a distance, you can't drive to actually use the class either. Um, so these, these are important here. Um, set color. Now, I guess we should probably actually make this happen inside the set color method, right? Because we're using set color, right? Because we, we just called our set color method in the constructor here. So set color can check that. Make sure you don't give it null. Now, our tests are going to get screwed up because our drive we had tested for false. There's ways to test for exceptions. Um, we're not going to bother with that right now. Um, next class, um, we'll, we'll talk about how we can test to make sure that, yes, we get exceptions. Um, there's, you can actually put it in a try catch block and assert inside of a catch block. Uh, that's, that's kind of the, the ugly way. And there's a nice built-in way into the testing framework to say, hey, I expect to get an exception back when I do this, which is kind of fun. Um, so we get all, all those good things here. And we can do this with any class we write. Right? We can throw exceptions. Totally up to us. And th this is our way of communicating. Right? Again, it's, it's a forceful way, but if you do a bad thing, if you give me a bad value, you try and use my class in an improper way, that's the only way the class can talk back. Right? We can't just spit things out to screen. A lot of times people will just try and do like error messages and they'll just do a system out print line. But again, we talked about a class has no idea where it's being used. It might be used on a mobile app. Have you ever seen console input on your mobile Android phones anywhere? Technically, you can get to it, um, which, which I found was interesting. But... I think I've done that on a Samsung. Okay. It's like a way to get to the developer code. Yep. Nice. You have to like reset it. I have to reset my phone from that. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's so... cool, though. I've never seen code on like, a phone. The, the way you turn on developer mode on phones, so like you can run Android Studio and run it on your Android device, is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You go to the, the About menu and you touch the, I think it's the model seven times. And that like asks you if you want to turn on developer mode. When I first read that, I was like, you're joking, right? This is this is a joke? No. That's that's how you put your phone in developer mode. Like, why? I guess it, it won't happen by accident, so maybe that was the goal. Uh, but yeah, so system out print lines, they might not see it. And even if they do see it, it doesn't mean that the other code isn't going to stop and have to fix it, right? If it's that important to your class that, hey, if, if a really bad thing happened and you need to make them deal with it or crash, you throw an exception and they will either deal with it or they'll crash and feel bad about themselves. Right? Anytime your program crashes, you should feel bad about yourself because now we know how try-catch blocks work, right? 
anything that could crash it, we just put in the thread lock and we don't crash. And we feel like, hey, we're like 10 times better than most app developers now, <laughs> right? Where their apps just randomly crash. Although that might not be totally on, their, on them. Uh, app development is hard. Um, yeah, there's actually not too much more to exceptions. Um, let, me, let me double check. What did I do? I'm losing my mind here. I think we did one other example on Tuesday night. So I can go look at this commit history and see all the commits. We did on Tuesday. Oh, okay, yeah, we looked at their... Um, um, giving it other values, right? Null values here, too. Um, we, oh, yeah, we, we added the talking stuffed animal. So we said, hey, if you don't give it a noise... Oh, this was reading a file. Okay, we just did some more file practice. That was fun. Yeah, if you give it no sound to make on that talking stuffed animal from the midterm, it crashed. Is that too small? I can zoom it in, sorry. Oh, goodness, that's a little large now, but okay. Uh, just another example. Hey, if it's empty here, if you buy a talking stuffed animal and it doesn't make any noise, your kid's going to be really sad. I mean, you might be sad too, right? If you go, go to Build-A-Bear, try and record the message and it doesn't work, something bad happened, that, that sort of thing. Um, we looked at reading files, and if the file didn't have all the details we wanted, it would crash if we gave it a null value. Right? This is kind of the idea here. And then, just a fun, silly thing, we took a claw machine that had an array list of talking stuffed animals. This idea of a composition where a class has other classes as, as attributes. Remember, array list is flexible. You can have as many in here as you want. So this works really well kind of for that model of like what's in your claw machine. Hey, I'll throw another talking stuffed animal in. I'll throw another talking stuffed animal in. It can essentially fill it up. I mean, we probably have some maximum, you know, due to physical requirements, but we, we don't know like the volume of these things. And so sure, we're just pretending here. And then you could add a stuffed animal. And we said, hey, if you go to add a null, that's no good, right? You can't put a nothing in my claw machine. You're gonna make kids cry again. So that was other, other ways of looking at, uh, you know, when we might use exception. But still, it's like doing the sanity checking, this defensive coding, making sure you don't give me bad values, because it will cause trouble down the road. Now, unfortunately, there's no automated way of doing that in NetBeans. Um, other tools, other development environments have some bit of, uh, like, they will generate this code for you. Um, I couldn't find it in NetBeans, which was sad. I thought it had it, but apparently not. So it's a little tedious, right, to write all this stuff out, but not not the worst in the world. Do some some sanity checking. All right, I think that's all we've got for exceptions. I was a, a little short, but this is this will kind of wrap up that object-oriented principles, right? The idea of the class encapsulates all of its details. Right, everything is private, and we give you access through public methods. You work with the abstract public interface, with this idea of abstraction. You don't need to know the details. You just need to know, hey, you can call a method. It will do the right thing. Just like we've used code in the Java library before with random. We don't know how random works. It just gives us random numbers, right? Um, and then this throwing an exception is the way that classes communicate that a bad thing happened. So it kind of wraps that up. Um, and we should be in pretty good shape. Let's see what else do we have going on. I think that's it then. Oh, inheritance um, is another object-oriented principle, right? Where you are a type of your parent. We're going to see this again when we talk about Java FX. Is why we, we sort of skimmed inheritance. We didn't go super deep on it, um, and then we'll come back and actually use it with Java FX. And some of that stuff hopefully makes sense. I think we're just about through all of our objectives here. Do you feel like you can efficiently utilize an IDE to develop a running Java program? Edit, compile, run a program. You should be able to use the debugger and step through. It's sort of worded really weird. I didn't write these. You can define constants and variables with primitive data types. Understand the use of these variables with related operators, type conversions, basic input or output operations. 
you know, like you did this with your first project, essentially. Uh, you can follow Java code and write Java code. We use the branches and loops, if else, whiles. Uh, read to and write from disk files. We're doing that now with our current project, right? Having fun with that one. You can create a Java class, create objects of that class, with private data members, public accessor and mutator methods, and a constructor. Understand the concepts of scope and variables within the object and its methods. Deal with some classes, right? Core concepts of inheritance. Did a, a little bit. I don't think our whole project relied on that, uh, but when we do our Java FX project, it will use that. Um, you can use arrays and array lists and create a basic GUI program with event handling is what we're going to do the rest of the semester. That'll take us through the end of class. So we've got essentially one... Oh, that's why. Okay, this looked really off, but this is generally... This would have been this week and the Monday as we got off here. It's like This seemed like we had way too much extra time in here, but it will take both sessions, the 17th and the 29th, to get through all of Chapter 17. That's what. I, that's why this looks funny. Okay, and then we'll have some maybe three sessions or so, some more Java FX stuff, two sessions of final project work time, and then we can present. That sound good? Oh, we got a couple questions here. Yeah, writing tests uh, for sure. It, it'll take more practice, Mike. Um, if you continue on, we'll do it again in twenty one fifty one. Does anyone in the software field still use Java FX? Random guy. Um, I think it's relatively popular with Java GUI applications. It's it's the later version of GUI stuff. There's actually older types, um, like Swing is an older style. Um, we used to cover that, and we just moved on to this latest and greatest Java FX. Yeah, I mean, there's like you just search some job postings and look, um, like Monster maybe. Let's see. All right, yeah, I'll see you in 2151 for sure, Mike. Let's see, so we want Java FX. Let's see what we get here. I think that should search. Um, no, you don't need my location. Java FX. Yeah, experience with Java FX. They, they want some Java FX. Java FX. Another one here. Oh. Java FX. Yeah, Java FX or Swing, sure. Um, so this is this is a decent way to gauge how popular something is, right? If you go look look for uh, job postings that use those particular things. Let's see. Three to six years experience in C plus plus. Experience with Java FX, Navy programs, weapon systems, Navy programs, C sharp. Oh, they uh, they're a defense contractor, right? The Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Oh, in Ithaca. They want two software developers to join their bioacoustics team. That sounds really interesting. Okay, this is C sharp. Where did the Java FX come from? Oh, useful to have. Okay, if you've done stuff in Java. So C Sharp and Java are relatively similar. Uh, C Sharp is Microsoft's language. Traditionally for Windows, um, Java has been uh, multi-platform. C Sharp is getting there now to slowly become multi-platform uh, with .NET, but got lots of fun stuff. Um, no, you don't use Java FX with mobile apps. It's a, a whole separate thing. Um, for mobile applications. And some of the, the concepts are similar, but um, it's not Java FX itself. It's it's whatever the uh, Android Studio stuff is. So it, it's a, a different different way. Like when you deal with mobile phones, you only have a small screen. You don't get a whole page of things. So it's all like screen related stuff. Um, it's just kind of interesting, but. Yeah, no, Java. I mean, Java is still real popular. There's a uh, the um, oh my goodness, Stack Overflow annual developer survey. Let's see, 2020. 
So Stack Overflow, I think everyone's familiar with it here, but the um, surveyed 65,000 people, looks like, they talked to. Um, over, that's the developer profiles, geography. I had to think about languages. Language. Most loved languages. It's not super low down on the list. That is rough. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's new and hot. It's um so this is what people like to use, not necessarily what they are using. Um so this is slowly taking over for it's not web tech, is it? I, I don't, I've never done it myself. Fast, memory efficient, no runtime, or garbage collector. Oh, embedded devices, critical systems, memory safe, thread safe. Interesting. Networking. Okay, so you real like low level um, stuff. Looks like supercharge your JavaScript. Oh, I guess. Read it, watch it, sure. Um, What's he dreaded? Hmm? They show both one most liked and most dreaded. Most dreaded? Stack overflow. Scroll up. It shows. Yeah, here's most dreaded. Most love dreaded and wanted frameworks. Oh. Yeah, it's like that. It's up for the. Oh, okay. Which is dreaded, VBA. <laughs> uh, this is you do like macros inside of um, Office things with VBA. It's uh, Visual Basic something. I forget what the A is. Um, Objective C for mobile on uh, iOS instead of Swift. Perl is awful to read and write. Um, it's so many parentheses. It's ridiculous. Uh, assembly. This one is not terrible. It's just ridiculously low level like you're you're doing like memory operations assigning things to registers and i thought it was kind of fun as a, as a class exercise but um linux kernel is going to be rewritten in rust oh perhaps c i mean c is not object oriented and almost everyone nowadays is learning object oriented um our electrical engineer friends, computer engineering friends still do C for embedded system sort of things. Uh, but real like application developers, software developers uh, tend to be object oriented. PHP is dreaded. Ooh, uh oh. Ruby, C. I like how PowerShell's in there. PowerShell. Bash. Oh, I love PowerShell. I'm a big fan of PowerShell. And wanted languages. People want to do Python, they want Java. Oh. I'm not a fan of JavaScript for myself, but that's okay. But, yeah, not... Java gets a little bit of love. Not a lot, but not terrible. Oh, web frameworks, okay. Those are web frameworks. Libraries. All sorts of fun things. Yeah, this, this little survey here is cool. Um... People love Linux. They want Docker. I mean, it's, it's a survey, too, of tech people on Stack Overflow, so you're going to get ever so slightly skewed results, but, you know, it's fun. JavaScript is so much easier than Java. Well, I mean, it does different things, but you can get real, real nasty with some JavaScript stuff, um, building web applications. So, that's all. I, I used to do web stuff, um, I've not done a lot of the front end stuff in a long time. Um, oh, it's probably been like eight years since I did JavaScript. Wow. That's what happens when you get old. Time just flies by. Um, yeah, th there's this idea of being a full stack developer, which essentially is what we train people for. Um, it, it's a little bit pie in the sky. The idea that you can do everything from the database up to a web application and everything in between 
Um, it's good to have all those skills. Most people tend to specialize and get better at one particular portion of that. Right? Either they're writing the back end or they're writing, you know, this middle la middle layer, or they're doing a front end sort of thing. Um, but knowing all of it, you know, and you can find either what you like best or what you're good at or whatever you can find a job in uh, sometimes comes up with that. Yeah, JavaScript is easy to get into. Uh, it's, it's fickle. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, if we don't have anything else, we'll call it a morning. we got time to work on the project, get that knocked out. Um, we'll talk about that one on Wednesday. We're almost due for project four, right? So get that wrapped up out the door, and then we'll move on to new things. With JavaFX, there's like two more tools to install, or another package to download and a tool to install. So it's a couple steps that are going to be a little tedious. We'll get there. It won't be so bad. Um, hopefully before you walk out the door on the 17th, you can run a little Hello World program with JavaFX. If you bring your laptop, we can get you set up on it. Um, it's all there on the virtual desktop. It just takes one step to like add it like or enable it, essentially. Um, and it should go pretty well. And then we'll talk about the final projects. We're not going to actually have a lot of time to do much in JavaFX. We'll talk about the final projects. So you can get some idea of what you want to start doing. You can start thinking about the classes you might build for it. Um, you don't necessarily have to get the graphical side of it up and running yet. We'll have more time uh, later in November. And we can go from there. All right. Awesome. Thanks, folks. If you're online, um, I'll be around. You can hit me up on Discord, email, text. Uh, we can go from there. And I think we're good. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want a free knock knock joke? Sure, I got right. I got my whole pack of them. No one redeemed the channel points for a knock knock joke yet. All right, let's see what we get here. I have not gone through the pack, so I don't I've not heard these ones before. Knock knock. Voodoo. 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 You think you are asking me so many questions? All right, that one wasn't okay. Um, knock knock. Yeah. Spell. Okay. W H O. I think okay, that was better than the voodoo one at least, right? Stuck in here. There it goes. Knock knock. Birdie. For the last time, open the door. I guess we just won't get to some of those at the bottom. Probably the best one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wishing there's a, a, a best one of these in the pack is <laughs> kind of against the point. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. You take care online. I'll see you around. Go ahead and stop. Oh, man, I, like my head was barely visible. I wasn't watching myself. I should change my angle. There you go.